Okay, what's going on guys? I'm a regular guy with the Regular Guy Firearms channel. Thanks for watching. Okay, so, you know, I've been wondering how exactly to, to phrase or get out certain little tidbits of knowledge here and there about little quirky things about like the gun guy world in general that, you know, are just little cool tidbits of knowledge but they never really meant anything for a lot of my other videos and reviews and stuff like that. So I figured I'd just start a series called The Facts That Nobody Cares About or something similar. I'm probably going to figure out a different title by the end of this whole editing process. But it's a good way for me to just share little tidbits of knowledge here and there that are kind of cool but don't mean very much in the grand scheme of things. Usually it's just cool little nuggets of information to have. And I also get to tell you guys about upcoming things and stuff like that. And I get to show off cool things like this guy. I made my own first order AR because one, Empire for Life. And two, you start doing things that get kind of weird when you're bored. Okay. And yes, I painted this myself. And I used um, Rust-Oleum in... Uh, the colors okay white is a base uh tape off stuff black on top that's how it's done okay uh i think it turned out pretty well and i actually had to hunt this down okay that was kind of a pain in the butt to get okay now now that i've gone ahead and shown that off because you know i'm bored um let's get into this video and the reason behind it okay um, what is hilarious to me is that a lot of guys really, really harp on mil spec quality, mil spec quality, mil spec quality when they talk about like their ARs and stuff. And to certain degrees, the reason for harping on a lot of this stuff is absolutely well founded. It's absolutely good to go as far as the reasoning and the mindset behind why a lot of dudes harp on needing mil spec parts for a quality fighting rifle. But let's unearth this just a little bit. The reason for dudes needing a mil-spec quality rifle is because that's the base. Remember, militaries get their equipment based on a lowest bidder basis. Okay? Meaning, if your equipment can do a job under a certain set of parameters and under a certain set of circumstances... For the least amount, you're getting a contract for our military. End of story. Okay. Now, the reason why I say that is because hokey stuff happens within the military to fit things like budget and ease of use and stuff like that. And some of this doesn't even really make sense, but, you know, it's the military. We like to not make sense at all sometimes. Meaning all the time. Okay, so point being, right? This is a BCM upper, right? Is that it's actually a SOCOM profile 14 and a half BCM up, right? Uh, carbine length gas system, all that other stuff, and main reasons why I got it was number one, I have a video coming up about uh, soldiers that want to ask me for how do I get an AR similar to. Uh, the one we use, and for fairly cheap, this was fairly cheap, it arrived to my door in like four days, I think, and it was readily available, just like all the other carbine stuff, right? Uh, I ended up getting that for the purposes of that video, only thing that's not the same between it and most military M4s is the profile of the barrel under the handguards is thicker, but... This is a company that everybody loves, right? BCM. BCM, Danny Defense, are usually like the top two that people talk about a lot. And it's because of the BC, uh, I'm sorry, it's because of the mil spec quality and all other stuff. And that is 100% true. What a lot of guys also don't recognize is that both of those companies go far above the military standard in a lot of ways. However, however, Anytime that people are looking at mil spec stuff, they never look too hard at the twist rate in the barrels. Now, the mil spec 
for a mil for the twist rate in a M4, M16, M249 barrel is one in seven twist. If you need it, if you need an explanation on twist rate and what that means, I have a video for that that I've already done. I'll put that in a link in the description below. It'll con it'll contextualize a lot of this. So if you're a little lost, watch that video and then come back to this one. But it's one in seven twist, right? M4, M16, and freaking M249, right? Meaning, it's one complete revolution per seven inches of the rifling as that bullet part, the actual projectile, travels down it. It used to actually not be that way. Before the M249 ever existed, we had our M16s, right? We started with the M16s, and then they were upgraded very quickly to the A1s. Um, mostly because Colt was cutting the shit out of corners from what Eugene Stoner uh mandated as required for the design they also effed with the ammunition um and how the powder and how the powder charge was loaded into them again against eugene uh stoner's design um and they were also saying that they were you know self-cleaning guns which is absolutely not true for a di gun and everybody knows this right and then the a1s came out now the a1s uh, came out with a 1 in 12 twist barrel, meaning one complete complete revolution per 12 inches or a foot of rifling. And it was meant to get just under two complete revolutions with a 55 grain bullet out of a 20 inch barrel, right? Now, the reason for this is that it's a high speed cartridge pushing a very light round. So, Less twist was required to stabilize it effectively. Now, as t as we progressed a little bit, um, the military had a stupendously retarded idea. And they were saying, well, we're having issues penetrating things and shooting through brush and stuff with a high-velocity cartridge that was designed to tumble really hard inside of human beings. Losing stabilization is kind of the point but we're having problems with doing all of that. So we want to be able to do all those things effectively and we want to still retain the ability to tumble and stuff like that. Okay, you can see with physics, this is probably not going to work very well if, you don't, if you're not really on point with your design principle, right? What the end result was from all of that was the M855 round. 62 grains, there was a steel penetrator on it and it was utterly worthless, okay? It over-penetrated things. It liked to ice pick through, especially under-fed dudes, which is what we ended up shooting at for a point in time for a while. Uh, and it did not do its job anywhere near as well as far as crush, tear, tumble, all that stuff inside of people. It took the military a long time to redesign that round to where it does it properly, and that's now in the M855A1, also a 62 grain bullet. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Around this time, the M249 was being developed. It was it's a light, it's a lightweight 5.56 millimeter belt-fed machine gun, right? Well, with belt feds, the standard for our military is that it needs to also be able to run a tracer so that the gunner or his A gunner could walk that thing in if he doesn't have splash to work with, right? Uh, or impact splash. He can actually watch the tracers going in and that A gunner can correct that uh, the dude that's shooting it into where it needs to be shot. Okay. The tracer that was developed for that was a 77 grain tracer round. And what's actually really funny is that with the actual bullet part, the projectile itself, the projectile is longer than anything that we use and it had to be seated farther into the case fun little fact but in order to maintain the same length for uh you know the casings and loading them into magazines feeding issues all that stuff but point is is that with this 77 grain round it requires a slower twist rate more on that in just a second with the 62 grain bullets that we were using before in the M855 that actually required 
a faster twist rate because it's a heavier round. The optimum twist rate for that was 1 in 9. Now, re remember what I said. It was 1 in 9. Now, our military was getting ready to adopt 1 in 9 across the board until somebody said, Hey, wait! We have this tracer round being developed in the M249 program, and 1 in 9 twist will not stabilize that thing properly, like, at all. Right? So, the military decided then that in order to stabilize this round, what was required was 1 in 7 twist. So, instead of taking the M855 and adding weight to it and shifting it to another designation so that the ball round was 77 grain, or instead of just keeping the M249 barrels 1 in 7 twist, because the only thing that a rifleman uses tracers for is last ditch effort ammo, or marking a house for an airstrike, of course the common sense answer was to make every single barrel in our arsenal sporting 5.56 a 1 in 7 twist barrel while keeping M855 exactly the same way that it was. Yeah, this happens all the time. We don't make sense. It's a thing. So, what's hilarious is that now when you come back to the civilian market and everybody's really harping on, you know, 1 in 7 twist, 1 in 7 twist, 1 in 7 twist, when the majority of what's shot out of most guns is 55 grain or 62 grain, you're not optimized for it at all. Like, at all. Now, the reason why most people actually don't care very much about it is that in a 1 in 7 twist barrel like this one exactly, with a 55 grain round, you can still stabilize it very readily or readily enough to where you're hitting an inch and a half and 100 yards on a bad day. That's not bad, and it's, the, and it's enough for people who just kind of shrug their shoulders and be like, whatever, that still works. But the crazy part is, is that the system is actually much more accurate than that. You're just running the wrong twist rate in your gun. But it's something that nobody really cares about because inch and a half is actually perfectly adequate and it works just fine. It's just, it could actually be better, you know. So, when you're looking for that mil-spec rifle and you're shooting a whole lot of 62 grain wolf or something like that, or a lot of 55 grain wolf, maybe one in nine's not so bad. But there you go. Just a little, just a little tidbit of knowledge that nobody cares about. Now, moving on from that, I have some up-and-coming stuff. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, that review is coming. Um, actually, there's stuff on it that I'm going to review too. Uh, Streamlight made this cool little mini scout clone that I'm also going to do a review on. You'll notice that this is the first time I run a pressure pad that runs out of 12 o'clock in God forever. But that's coming up, and this is coming up too. I shot my first groups through it um, today, and there's a lot to be said about this guy, actually, but you'll get that review eventually. With all that being said, though, guys, I'm glad that you stuck with me this far. If you have, um, if shoot, if you like what you if you like what you watched, if you want to see more stuff like this, go ahead and shoot that in the comments box below. Ask me questions, do whatever. But until then, remember. A regular guy's firearm is the last defense against tyranny, but still, empire for life.